Thank you very much. And um, first of all, congratulations, like Conrad and everybody else who is involved in organizing this great event. Uh, ten years, oh my God, unbelievable. World Sepsis Day. And also, I have to make sure that, um, just as a, a reminder, I'm no longer working with the New York State Department of Health. Um, and so this dedication for this talk goes out to all the great people in public health, but also um, for the great colleagues that I had uh, for the last six years in the Department of Health. Uh, the topic of this session is learning by uh, exchange of experience, and I think this is a really great thing. Um, and so I want to uh, hone in on like three key points um, in the next 10 minutes. One, that um, this example that we had in New York using public health policy um, as a way to um, reduce or improve patient outcome uh, might be one of the tools in the toolbox, and we talked about um, many tools uh, before. The second key point is that collaboration is key. Um, nobody can do it alone. Um, we physicians, uh, we need help from patients, as we heard earlier, um, from public health officials, from government officials, from the media and everybody else. Um, so it's, it needs to be a collaboration. And the third, that no approach, there is not a, a, a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, everything is local. Everything has to be tailored to the individual situation. So with that, um, let me just start. Uh, sepsis in New York, um, like everywhere else, um, we heard earlier, sepsis is local. These are like one of the key facts that about 50,000 of severe sepsis and septic shock are diagnosed in New York. Um, the variation on in-hospital mortality, and I just want to highlight that because that is an issue that does not get enough press and enough um, speaker time. Um, variation in health uh, means that if you as a patient by accident walk into one hospital um, that has poor performance on quality metrics versus if you as a patient walk into a hospital that has a good performance in health metrics, that your chance in the poor performance hospital is by, 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 by chance much lower uh, the, your survival rate. And therefore we found by looking in the beginning at the data that there is a fourfold difference in from the low performing hospitals to the high performing hospitals. And therefore all the patients um, who by access by chance going into the low performance hospital have a much lower chance of survival um, from the beginning. And then, of course, that protocols help, and you heard many people um, talk about that. In New York, um, we had a strong vision, a political goal, that then shifted into a health policy goal, and we kept it broad um, because we needed the hospitals, the physician, um, and the care community on board, reducing sepsis mortality in hospitals by 50%. And this is not... Um, to kind of mandate, but really to support already existing quality initiatives. We talked a lot in the beginning about these voluntary initiatives that don't help. So this mandate and this goal really supercharged um, the, uh, the, the policies in the hospitals, and I thought that was, was a good point. Um, we named our regulation uh, Rory's regulation, and uh, Kieran Staunton is here, and he talked earlier in his keynote address about this. Um, in 2013, and I just want to remind again, it was like three pillars that we were standing on, um, that the hospital were mandated to submit evidence protocols. That does not mean that one protocol was used for the whole state. It meant that a hospital needed to have a protocol in place uh, for the detection and also for the treatment of adult and pediatric sepsis that all the staff needed to be trained on and that the hospitals have to submit clinical data to the Department of Health. Um, I heard earlier Mr. Kretler, who is one of the sepsis survivors, um, talk about what this did was put sepsis on the agenda for every single hospital. And I think that was one of the key aspects that suddenly from this voluntary, we can take part in it or not, 
it made it immediately high on the agenda uh, from the hospitals to start action. And then the department, um, we, we took the data, we also gave the data back. And I just want to emphasize also the difference between New York to uh, a CMS sepsis measure. We concentrated from the very beginning, not only on the adult, but also on pediatric sepsis. And as a father of two children, that is important. We are um, providing and, and collecting pediatric sepsis mm -hmm. data. Um, then, you know, many, many people helped us with that. I'm not, I'm an internist who does HIV medicine now. Um, I'm not an intensive care um, or ICU doc or, or emergency doctor. I needed help um, and many of my peers, um, including uh, people who are speaking here on this event, like Mitchell Levy and uh, Dr. Reinhardt, everybody helped with expertise. Um, the clinical case data collection was a manual abstraction um, in the beginning, which we switched now to a digi digital public reporting, very important. Um, we made the results available for everybody to see. So it was not one of these initiatives where we kept all the data and published it um, privately in research papers. We put it on the website. Everybody can see in New York how the hospitals are performing on sepsis measures and then quality improvement. So what are the outcomes? Um, I, I put the slide in because I wanted to start with the slide on the, on the hospitals. And you see on the left-hand side, these are hospitals in the top two quintiles. These are the superstars of the sepsis um, performance metrics. And you see over time how they converge together. And I think that is going back to the point that I earlier made, reducing variation is super important. And you see um, that the trend is going up. And then on the right-hand side are the low-performing hospitals. And you see initially that the variation is much higher. This is expected in every quality initiative. But then also that there is a trend upward, which is great, but also that it converges, um, which is great. And then um, on patient outcomes, uh, Kieran Staunton mentioned um, over the time uh, we reduced the mortality from sepsis, or at least over the five years um, that I was there from 32% down to 22%, and recently we were actually below 20%. And when you translate that in saving lives, it means about 16,000 lives over the five, over the, over the like um, five years have been saved, which is an incredible amount. And um, I, I really uh, am proud of my colleagues and also the hospitals and the caregivers and the physician in the hospitals making such an impact um, from this. And then, of course, the last slide that I have here is, um, again, you know, you can never be sure if the mortality numbers that you get in New York, how they transfer if you look at other states. And there is a great, um, great study from uh, uh, Jeremy Kahn, who works with a research group in, uh, in, at the University of Pittsburgh, looking not only at New York, but comparing New York with Florida, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Maryland, and look into the mortality benefits before the sepsis initiative and the sepsis mandate and Rory's regulation, and then after Rory's regulation. And you see very clear that although the mortality from sepsis um, was much higher in the beginning in New York, but this, the, the, the impact that the, that the initiative had um, really translated to a 3.2% uh, mortality that was lower than expected after this initiative took hold. And this goes back to this point that I made earlier. Um, suddenly, sepsis was on everybody's agenda, the hospitals, the physician, the nurses, everybody uh, worked hard on that. And that's why we have this impact. Um, and uh, this is a great point uh, to, to, to make um, that this, again, it is not, it's not one size fits all. Um, it probably doesn't work in every setting, but uh, in New York, uh, with our about 200 hospitals, it works. So just to sum up, um, a public health policy might be another tool in the toolbox to make um, like a certain uh, quality improvement mandatory instead of uh, making it just voluntary. Um, the collaboration and the flexibility are important. And with that, thank you very much. <laughs>